Alright, welcome back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is August 2nd, 2020. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. Hello, guys. It's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. <laughs> How's it going, my good man? Ooh, it's been a good week. Has? It's been a very good week. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, as you guys probably have noticed by now, we are not alone. We are actually joined by, once again, by our wonderful friend... And now, uh, North American champion here, continental champion, Speediest Chief. <laughs> Hi, gentlemen. How are you? Luis, uh, Chris, thanks so much for having me on. <laughs> it was so much fun last time. Yeah, it was hilarious that, um, well, I don't think it's hilarious. I just, it's, it's, it's amazing that from the time we had you before, now we're here. And now, before you were just another competitor. Now we're like, just another, <laughs> just another competitor. <laughs> <laughs> now we have you here as the North American Continental Champion in the Silt Arena tournaments. Man, it has been a wild ride for you, hasn't it? It really has. Uh, past couple of weeks, pretty crazy. It's just, um, honestly, guys, I don't think that there was a moment when I kind of knew that something special was going to happen. It was just kind of every every single round, you just kind of. Go in with the best game plan that you can and just play as well as you can. And on that p particular day, my game plan worked really well. Yeah. So I got really, really lucky. Well, we're definitely going to be talking about all your experiences, your matches, whatever that you really want to share with us. That's great. Before we completely begin with the interview, guys, don't forget that we are also part of the Professor Network. So please check us out at theprofessornetwork.com slash purifypodcast. There are wonderful people who have, uh, you know, we've been able to join with and, uh, you know, share the wonderful world of Pokemon with you guys. So make sure you click on that link if you can and make sure that you, uh, you know, you check us out for sure. But okay, with that out of the way, introductions out of the way, the raid quest is done. So that's good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing, I'm trying to like make sure that everybody gets like a, a piece of everything here. So, <laughs> all right, but let's get to know Chief. Uh, you know, you've been here before, but we have probably some new viewers and some new listeners. If you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, you know, what you do, uh, where you're from, you know, whatever that you, you can tell us here. Hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is Speediest Chief 2 in the game. My real name is Will. Uh, I will say I moved to Tampa, Florida in 2017 and was quickly adopted by the great community here. Uh, my first cup was the Kingdom Cup back last year. And uh, things have just been awesome since then. But yeah, I love uh, Tampa, Florida. I love the community. And when I first moved here, Pokemon Go was one of the first uh, actual, one of the first friend groups that I actually made when I moved here. So the game just connects people in incredible ways. Yeah, that is true. Um, you definitely wouldn't think of what, you know, people like Pokemon until, you know, Pokemon Go came out and then you're all of a sudden you're like hanging out with them, going raiding, things like that. And you just like, well, okay, that works, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the that's the gist of it for Mr. Chief, of course. You know, have been a wonderful community that we all love, and you know, Pokemon is a universal game. Anybody can love it. You know, especially now more than ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Chief, um, you know, again, champion here once again. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get some some questions. Chris, you want to read up that first question uh, that we have there? Oh, for sure. For sure. So, it, so since the start of the season, what was your goal to go on? Like, were you trying to hit ace, like, within, like, the first three or, or just right before the end? Because I know ace was my goal, and then they just added on another, and then they added on another. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, last season, I finished as a challenger. And uh, at, you know, I remember it because it was the very last cup. It was Mirror Cup of last season. And our local community leader, uh, Lyndon Ryu, he went through this crazy gauntlet of, like, the best players in Tampa. He went, I think, 7-0 and and just uh, defeated everybody along the, uh, the path. And after that tournament concluded, the uh, last cup of the season, he was dubbed an ace trainer. So my goal definitely this season was to hit ace. Um, once that happened for me, my goal kind of shifted to elite. I remember talking with Arrow right before our decisive round eight match in the Continentals prelims. And uh, we got on a call real quick once we saw that we prepared. And we both kind of uh, were <laughs> happy about it, but a little bit nervous and a little bit kind of kind of wishful that it would have been somebody else who would have had to fight. 
But uh, I remember uh, speaking with him and I said, yeah, Arrow, my, my only goal right now is to hit elite. And he said, okay, well, uh, go ahead and tell me what you're leading and I'll uh, wrap this up for us. And <laughs> uh, well, luckily I didn't tell him what I was leading. We played our matches out. But yeah, elite was my goal uh, for a long time. And then uh, suddenly, you know, I, I started to win these matches and just one thing kind of snowballed into another. And uh, like I mentioned on a couple other uh, talks, uh, just the carrying the gratitude the whole way was really, really what pushed me through each match. Well, <laughs> I want to say that that is a wonderful thing to say. And um, at the same time, were you expecting to get this far when you started this? Like when you started the season, like did you expect it to go all the way? Or were you just <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to just play the match and see how it goes, you know, things like that. Like what were your thoughts in that, in that regard? Yeah, so uh, I'm sure that a lot of people kind of have this the same kind of thought when they're when they're in a high stakes environment. I know Pokemon Go and the Silver Arena is something we do for fun, but of course we want to do well. So I, I think a lot of people have this kind of two voices in their head. Uh, one is telling them to just play their game, uh, just do what they they've been doing all season because it's been working. Play as well as you can, and and, and just kind of be happy with the outcome. And uh, excuse me, however things turn out. But the other voice in my head, uh, which I was able to silence, which I'm really glad because it's it was pretty nasty. Uh, the other voice was, this is going to be your only chance to ever get this far. Uh, there are a lot of players that have a much better win rate or they, they're much more consistent or they're more technically skilled that aren't in the position that I'm in. So I have to make the most of every single moment because uh, who knows if this is ever going to happen. So luckily I was able to block out that latter voice and, and just kind of focus on on the moment at hand. I remember in round one of, of the championships against Hump Styles, his team countered mine perfectly. And my only goal was to not get totally blown out. And uh, <laughs> once we got through round one, it was all just kind of icing. Up. <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, especially when you start getting against the bigger competitors out there. And then when you start the Continentals, mm -hmm. you're like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so it's a good thing that, you yeah. know, you found a niche to make sure that you're like, okay, this is just maybe another battle that you're doing. You know your matches, you know your ways. Uh, you know, you have seen this probably, you know, so many times after, you know, so many matches in, in the in the competitor scene. But it's just like, just like you say, you know, you got to turn something off and then just make sure, just focus. Just, you know, be, if you win, you win. If you're not, you're not. But I mean, if you win, of course, you know, you can continue on going with such a great length and you did it. You I mean, you got to that length. And every time I see you and, you know, in Twitter, in South Arena, you know, I see, oh my goodness, okay, he's he's finished, uh, he got into continental qualifiers, and then after qualifiers, you got into, I, I saw how the qualifiers went, and you literally lost the first match, because I was watching yeah. the entire thing, and then all of a sudden, you start winning and winning and winning, and you, you win a full 7-1 in that match, I mean, you got like third during that continentals, and then after that, you know, just like continentals and, in, in, you know, the finals and all that, it's just like, it's crazy. It's crazy how that kind of type process, you know, comes to me. Because for me, something. I mean, I love competitive stuff, but you know, when I get to the nitty gritty, I mean, once I get to like, you know, it, it's it, it, something gets it could get you down so much that you're just like, okay, why? Why am I supposed to be doing? So many people are better than me, but you know, if you just grind it, I'm pretty sure that you get just as far as you can, you can. But you know, just the way you do things is, is insane. So <laughs> yeah, I, I have a couple of uh, points I could share about that round one loss. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so when the Continentals prelims started, I had just gotten back from grabbing a coffee. Um, I, I admitted I have a Starbucks thing, so I, I went and got my Starbucks coffee, and I got back, and I had about 15 minutes until it started. So I did a couple of warm-up matches. I just left the sound off, and I'd seen on Twitter that day that the sound was broken mm -hmm. in the PvP battles. And I read it. I said, okay, well, you know, it's iOS, but it's not going to happen to me. <laughs> There's no way that'll happen to me. So for the past six months, I've been using sound account fast moves. And I'm actually working on that video right now. Uh, right before we got on the call, I was, I was working on it. I'm trying to get some uh, videos out on YouTube for you guys. And one of them is going to be the prelims. And as you can see in that first game, my uh, sound bar keeps on popping up on the left side. Like I keep clicking sound because I think something's wrong with my phone. Um, but that first uh, first game, I was, I, I was actually able to win and I lost the second two. But Jay's fan did me a lot of favors because he is an awesome player and he climbed that ladder really, really high. So my buckle score went up 
because he kept on winning as well. Right. So even though I lost that first game, uh, he actually helped me in the uh, in the long. Run. Oh, that, that, that's great. I mean, how do you know the Swiss runs go that's uh, a good about point. it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one thing for sure that I do remember you tweeting out to Niantic and saying, hey, I mean, I'm right at this tournament and all of a sudden my sound is not working. I'm like, well, that's not good. So I kind of knew that it was the case when it comes down to it just because of your tweet. But I was like, hopefully this doesn't <laughs> actually affect the entire tournament. And, you know, I know a lot of people are suffering because of it, but because... Yeah, I, I'm still a little embarrassed. That, that was a rage tweet. Uh, I just said something to the effect of, if you don't care about your game, why should I? And I know that there's there's a lot of blame here on both sides. Like, uh, it might be an iOS thing. It could be a Pokemon Go app thing. I, I'm not technically skilled to know the difference. So, I, you know, we love Niantic and everything they do. But in that moment, I, I was pretty... <laughs> I mean, trust me, I, I have my fair share of rages to Niantic. And even though <laughs> I love what they do, it's just like sometimes I wish they would just like... Why? <laughs> it, it's just it's just because we love the game so much, yeah. and we put so much time into it. We just want it to work. Yeah, definitely, sure. definitely. So, um, you know, I mean, when it comes down to those kind of that kind of things, you know, I know it's probably when you say it is either the antics or the games fall. It could be your phone. It could be something like that. Just gotta keep on going. See how it goes. How it works out. Um, we know uh, we all had had experience, especially you know the recent ones with you know how Golfest has come around. So we'll see how that one works out for sure. So Chris, you want to go ahead and ask him the next question? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I remember you saying before that you were a Pokemon fan, like before Pokemon Go. So I wanted to ask you this question: What would you name the next Pokemon professor if you got the choice? I'm very curious. <laughs> Uh, well, Professor Pure Lighter, obviously. Oh, oh, oh! I mean, come on, uh, is this is this a real? <laughs> oh my goodness! That, I feel all, like we can also just call him Ken if you want to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you've got. Uh, I think there's like a tree and flower thing here. Professor Oak, mm -hmm. Professor Willow, Magnolia. Yeah. Magnolia. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite tree. I have a least favorite tree, pine tree. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call. Yeah, it growing pine. up. <laughs> Growing up in Mississippi, pine trees for miles, and the pollen gets everywhere. Uh, good point. Good point. <laughs> uh, if anything, I mean, we already gone through you know a lot of different regions, so it really will depend on the region's tree. Like you know, we have uh, uh, I can't even remember the names of all the Pokemon's now. Uh, the Pokemon Professor. Thank you so much. I mean, we got there's so guys. many. Hey, there's, uh, I don't blame you at all. There's so many. Uh, I I named off the two that I'm familiar with, so <laughs> you know more than. Me. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. So yeah, too many, it, too much. Kind of goes like that. Okay, hold on one second. I may have to fix something here. Doop, 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 doop. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, um, well, we continue on, and I'm actually gonna ask this question because I gotta check something out real quick, guys. So, uh, you know, has winning continental made you a lot more confident in the Pokemon Go PvP scene? Uh, has this uh, boost up, you know, uh, a lot of that? Uh, probably like nervousness that you had at the beginning um but now that you're champion uh what do you think like do you think that finally you're able to like get to where you know all those competitors are and now that you are but i mean do you, do you think that now the confidence is more boosted up thanks to that yeah that's actually a really uh, a really insightful question because i know a lot of people especially since we went to all remote tournaments um, when you're at your in-person tournaments and something doesn't go right, you can always kind of walk over and talk to a friend and say, oh yeah, well, you know, they had Rhydon in the back and my last Pokemon was a poison type, so I lost it. And, you know, you kind of share that experience and say, oh, well, that stinks, but you'll get them next time. But when you're doing all remotes, you aren't really in that insane environment. Friends can kind of help you and, and pick you up emotionally and mentally. So uh, I felt like, I, I definitely felt like I had something to prove competitively this season. Uh, there are a lot of players that are just insanely good that are also content creators as well, and they're they're popping up all the time. I mean, though Technical is, is streaming, uh, FP6 is amazing. King is the is obviously like the uh, the Fort Knox of of Pokemon knowledge, and he's just incredibly good. So uh, as a content creator and as a competitor, I did have uh, some things in my mind kind of kind of were pushing me to find my place in the community. So. Uh, again, I think there are a lot of players that are really good and they all have their different strengths. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, when I was practicing for the Continentals Championships, 
I had a kind of a war room, if you want to call it that, where I had about 12 or 15 friends. And at any point in, during the day, I would just send a message and say, hey, can you run Hump Styles team? Or hey, can you run uh, Doombug's team against me? And uh, some of those guys, uh, because of the situation, I would tell them, you know, if you, if you would mind leading something for me so I can see how it works and just trial and error over and over and over again. I mean, some of those guys played those teams so well that I just didn't see a way that I could win. And um, uh, again, like it all, it all comes back to the, the skill cap of the players. And on that particular day, I just had the right reads. Uh, I had the right leads as well. Uh, part of my rhyming and, and things kind of turned out. But yeah, competitively, I, th- I think the monkey is off my back. Uh, I think I'm ready to go back into, into YouTube and see what I can offer. Um, everybody has a different voice and everybody's unique. And when I ask my friends what they think I should start publishing, uh, they, oh, they all give me the same answer. They say, just be yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I know cool. a lot of people on uh, Twitter were saying, we're going to watch it no matter what you make. We're watching it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Which, which um, is... it, it's, um, I mean, I did see that you, you, know, you stopped doing the content creation. Um, you know, I want to say because you were busy, but at the same time, you know, you wanted to concentrate on those kind of matches in those kind of days. Um, you know, what were like, I, I think if I, if I go to your channel right now, the last one was a month ago and that was when the Sorcerer's Code was, uh, was announced and things like that. So, um, was, you know, getting into the whole focus on contentals and everything, was that the niche to say that I couldn't post, post the content that I wanted to post right now? Or was it because there wasn't enough content out there right now? Yeah, so that's a good question. I, I think some of these guys like uh, FP Sticks, Purple Kyogre, uh, King, who post every single day, uh, I really think they have just better systems in place than I had. Right. I was kind of just making the videos as I could, kind of asking friends for battle content or trying to make my own every single day. And I feel like a different kind of approach might be a better thing that's more sustainable for me. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, with my videos in particular, I know a lot of players can just go on and just make their video, make a couple points here and there. But I really do my best to try to kind of illustrate all the things that are going on in my mind. So for a, for a typical YouTube video, I might do three or four takes of it just so I can make sure I get everything in that I want uh, that, you know, to say. So I feel like, uh, of course, I had a lot of focus, competitively speaking. I didn't expect to do as well as I did, but I wanted to do as, as well as possible. But I do think at the same same angle, getting to a point where I can make content in a in a way that fits my lifestyle was really important to me as well. And I yeah. think I'm almost there. Yeah, that's definitely a, a moment of content creation. It's like, you know, you're, uh, you're 5.5 in, in subscribers. I'm pretty sure that went fully up since you become a, the champion there. Because I think I was like around four point something when when I actually saw it last time. But uh, you know, finding that right balance when it comes to you know playing the game, uh, making content, uh, you know, doing battles, doing tournaments. You know, it, sometimes it gets a lot of you, especially because you know you still have a life to live, and you know you gotta yeah. you know you gotta work, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. So it's not it's not an easy way of you know getting things done so that's why something like chris and i do is like when we have the time we go ahead and stream because at least in streaming you can get the audience you want you know you don't have to worry about too much on the editing side of course just like i mentioned before uh but you know if you can find your right balance you know the days that you can work on videos days and you can post them and get ready to go or when you want to play the game because this game is just getting too insane <laughs> yeah there's so much to do you're never done <laughs> yeah so it's kind of those things so you know i have you know myself you know I, I put my in the shoes into what content creation is especially for pokemon go because i wanted to see how you know how that went especially since you know a lot of people out there were like you know they want to hear the news, hear what the best here than there. So once I found what was right for me that I can do with the time that I have, plus, you know, all my lifestyles and everything, you know, here we are. That's what I wanted to do. And this is what we're doing. And, you know, I'm just been happy so far since Chris and I have been starting this podcast. So I'm sure that once you find your niche, once you find the actual time to, you know, organize yourself, then everything else will seem easier and easier by the moment. So yeah, that's thank you for. It. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so what's what's next? What's next for the big series chief? Uh, what's your next uh, move aside from probably YouTube uh, in your Pokemon Go career or you know whatever else you want to do really right now? 
Yeah, absolutely. So around mid to late August, we're looking at the World Championships for the Silph Arena. I'm going to be one of four representatives. The others, uh, Europe, Europe uh, Asia Pacific, and of course, South America as well. So um, I'm planning to practice a lot for that. I'm going to try and pick up some some uh, quality sparring partners. So um, I, I feel like I have a, a lot of responsibility representing both Canada, which course is insanely stacked with battlers <laughs> and north america as well so i just want to do my absolute best to represent everybody so i'll definitely be practicing quite a bit for that i will say i've been getting a lot of encouragement to start streaming as well uh, so that's something i'm looking into i might need to upgrade my computer uh, but i'm getting some help from some close friends in terms of layouts um get, getting all the technical things ready so yeah. i'm exploring that as well but again going back to the balance uh, maybe i'll take a look at everybody else's streaming schedules try not to like overlap my time with them and, and see how we can figure that out because if you go on twitch at any point you can find an awesome high quality streamer oh, yeah. so yeah. It's, i just had to figure out what i can offer that people aren't already yeah i mean oh. everybody has their own niche uh, when it comes to streaming and it just really depends on what you really want to do or um what you really want to like get into it like the kind of content that you don't want to like follow but at the same time you know it starts as like copying somebody you know, it starts yep. like, okay, you, you begin doing something that you liked, that you watched somebody do, and then you just kind of try to do it yourself. You know, that's why we shiny hunt in Pokemon Sword and Shield. We, we show, now we can show, you know, raids in Pokemon Go. Um, you know, if you actually go right now on Twitch, I'm pretty sure Reversal is, tw is doing all the same thing that I'm doing and that I would be oh, doing right now. So yeah. it's, it just comes, comes to like point, the kind of community you're going to create if you start streaming. It's. You know, people, of course, people will come and people that you know, they'll be like, hey, you know, I'm going to, you know, follow him on Twitch and, and hopefully, you know, he gets to that point where affiliation and all that comes through. It's just like when I just, I was streaming normally one day and then all of a sudden I get reversals, uh, just like, you know, rating me on Twitch and I'm like. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. He came with like 400 plus oh. people and all of a sudden I'm just like, <laughs> I, I have no idea how this happened, but it did. Thank you so much, everybody. It's like, and then I, I hit affiliated, so. I'm sure. Oh, that that's one, great. Yeah. So once you get to people to know you and, you know, people do know you, like they've seen your channel, they've seen uh, the kind of like accomplishments that you had over the last few months and everything. I'm sure that once you start streaming, you will find that community that people want to listen to you and hear you. And then, you know, it all just skyrocket from there. And things like that is just it, it gets to, to a crazy point where you just kind of feel like you need to be there every day. Which, yeah. <laughs> things like that it, and and well yeah that's basically what what streaming should be and again it's all about the community once you create your community oh. they will follow and whatever you do wherever you go whatever you you know you're streaming if you want to take a day off from your regular streaming schedule and just stream something else you like to do you'll figure it out and that's what when people you know that's what they want to come for. They come for you, not they, they come they, they come for specifically for you and then after that, you know, whatever game you're playing. But you know, so <laughs> That makes total sense. Definitely, definitely. So uh, I'm we're also excited, really excited because I don't think Silt Arena has posted. I don't know if I actually I may have probably missed it, but did they announce worlds yet? So there's no no official announcement yet. Um, we're, we're kind of looking at dates. I can't reveal the specific dates, of right, course, definitely. but uh, yeah, we're looking at mid to late August. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. At least we have a little time to prepare and all that. I'm sure they, you're the grinding whatever meta they, they will have specifically for that. So um, yeah. once we hear from them, you know, I'm pretty sure that we'll cover in the podcast here and we'll, of course, wish you more than luck because we want to see you. We want to see the world champion speediest year. <laughs> uh, I, see. You know, we've all been wanting it for for such a long time, and I think it's it's time we want to see that that title on the back of that screen over there that you have there, <laughs> the back of that next one. <laughs> <laughs> Just another battle. Just another battle. Just yeah. another battle. But yeah. Um, so Chris, you want to actually ask the next question now? <laughs> oh, dude, this this almost ties in. <laughs> Why are you okay. so lucky? I saw, I, I, I know everyone's been seeing your posts, especially since GoFest. Oh my gosh, a rank one shiny Azu? Are you joking? <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, <laughs> a funny story. I was actually in Orlando uh, with two of, two of my best friends in the community. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Lyndon Ryu and, and Jingles, uh, who is our, our Orlando like 
uh, overlord. He just knows the area so well. So we decided to do day one of GoFest with him, and we were just driving around. He said, hey, my, my buddy just messaged me and said there's a, a rank one Merrill over here, and we better go get it. And we're driving over there. It's, it's like three or four minutes away. And I think it was – I can't remember which one of them it was, but somebody said – wouldn't it be crazy if it was shiny? Oh and we said, yeah, you know, that, that'd be awesome. So we're driving over there and they, uh, we kind of park and they click on it first. Hasn't popped up for me yet. Neither of them are shiny. And I click on it and it's freaking green. And I'm just like totally floored by it. Also, it was such a big investment. It's like 300,000 dust to get that okay. guy ready. But of course, the rank one is, is exactly what you want. And every time I see an Azu in GBL and it's shiny, I think nice flex, but I'm pretty sure it's not ranked. Uh, you have to look. You have to look at the CP to be sure. But now I can say with confidence that mine is. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, definitely will be powering up that Azu and featuring it in some videos very soon. Um, I will say I was a little nervous because uh, I don't know if you if you were going to mention this later, uh, Luis or not. But the level fifty um, kind of the, the level cap being increased, level fifty might be coming. So I was a little bit concerned that powering something up might not work out how I imagined it to, but I don't know if there's going to be a CP rebalance or what exactly is going to happen. So, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger. Yeah, so we did actually mention the um, the level cap and the mega evolutions in the last podcast, uh, mostly gotcha. because we were like right fresh off the end of GoFest and we were, you know, going ha- hot ham on it, you know, raids all around, trying to get the shinies that we wanted to, PvP, Pokemons and all that stuff. Um, well, right after that, you know, it was a little later than usual, but we did actually got to uh, to do a podcast that day, and we did mention what was going on in those um, through those events and what was the actual news. But you know, we'll give your thoughts in just a moment. We'll definitely have a question for you there. <laughs> um, Guys, if you're listening to this and you, and you enjoy the podcast episode, check out that episode as well. I'm gonna do that right after the show. There you go. There you go. Uh, trust me, we're probably gonna be like that tired when that when you when you listen to that podcast. We were like done that day but we were, we were <laughs> happy to talk about our experiences for sure so but awesome. you know following that to that and before we actually ask the sixth question chris i'm pretty sure that we want to actually what how was your GoFest experience like you know what you got how many shinies you get uh how many aside from the asu that we already know uh you know what kind of pvp months were you able to catch and all this stuff how was your GoFest? you know yeah it was great i think on saturday i caught around 1200 pokemon and then sunday was like 950 i know those are rookie numbers compared to some people i mean some people just go totally wild for go fest but uh honestly uh gentlemen my favorite day was day two i just felt like there was so much to do uh it was kind of almost like overwhelming in the moment because you want to do the giratina raids and you want that 15 attack dialga but you also want to knock out the rockets and get your stable eyes and you want to do these catches and all the spawns were available it was just it was just totally nuts and i feel like um day two is definitely my favorite but day one i caught more so uh, we're always looking for more stardust and that's exactly what i got in terms of good pvp catches i got a few rank ones a few things here and there uh, i'm gonna be honest guys i'm still clearing out my bag and i need to have it clean by magic card day so oh i'm kind God. of pacing myself <laughs> Uh, yeah, we will we will be talking about that in our news uh, later on, of course. But uh, yeah, no, the the Star's Gust run was actually pretty nice. I think I went close to four mil because I've been you know kind of saving things like that for the, for the last few months. I haven't really actually done much PvP, and, and if I say so myself, especially now the rates are going on. <laughs> uh, but you know, GoFest was an amazing experience. Uh, either way, one way or another, we actually like. It blew up like so many things are happening but we'll get to that uh, to the neat and greedy of what the next few things are going to be of course once it comes around but you know I'm, it's great that you actually were able to do i don't know but you do seem to have every time i see a post from you and there's a pokemon that you caught either through an event or something you just get that rank one and i'm just like <laughs> why <laughs> how <laughs> you're only like an hour away from me dude i'm like <laughs> it's i mean it's not all sunshines and rainbows because uh, and this is just so nitpicky. I, I know rank one is really what you want, but if you do a Sylph Cup and you face off against a Gengar and you have your rank one Gengar, you just have to remember you have zero attack. Mm-hmm. So if your opponent has even one attack, they're going to win CMP times. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there, there's always like more to add. I will say that's one of my favorite things about Pokemon Go that I don't speak on as much as I should, is that every Pokemon you catch is unique, and although it's available to everybody, that's your Gengar, that's that's your uh, Azumarill, it's, it belongs to you, and it's special. 
you never know. It could win you a battle in a moment that you don't expect. You know, you sometimes I, I feel like when, you know, people are saying zero attack is best for this PvP mon and for this rank one and everything, but you don't take into consideration, even though you do the better damage in the end of, in the long run, the CP, CM, CMP tie, whenever you're actually facing, you know, the, the same one, the mirror match, kinda, yeah. like, you know, kind of like changes like, like the mechanics of that, you know, okay, zero attack, no, one attack, you're actually winning. Now you actually win this match off because of this. I'm like, how does this work? Exactly. <laughs> Niantic, please just implement speed into the game. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always, there's always more to keep in mind. And that's just another kind of uh, vector of the game. Like, it, you can go out and hunt your rank ones, but you also need some high attacks. Every oh, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, so while I get this Gibble raid going, because I need a shiny <laughs> Gibble, and I've been wanting a shiny Gibble for the He can't time. stop. I know. He I can't stop the raid. I think I've done like three raids while we're still talking here, so <laughs> don't get me. Don't, wow. don't, don't stop me now. Thanks, God. <laughs> All right, God. so uh, Chris, you want to actually ask him that pre that's supposed to be the previous question, but now the question now, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So something um, I'm just trying to picture in my head, but I can't really. Um, what genre of music do you listen to, and do you use it to help during, you know, YouTube videos or help with your battles, you know, keep you chill? Yeah, good question. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty white bread, as, as you can tell, but I, I do listen to a fair amount of rap. Um, I just okay. like the, I, I used to listen to rock, and I, and I remember being a kid, I was probably maybe 14 and i'd grown up on rock music you know lincoln park metallica um, oh, yeah. I, I liked all that kind of stuff and it's great but then i started listening to rap and there's just so much confidence so much energy in the music and you just feel like you know you're you're the baddest guy on the street you can just do whatever yep. you want to do so <laughs> if you really do want to get hyped i do recommend that i will say for most of my videos i do use um or is that for actually all of my videos i use non-copyrighted music and I like to do a lot of maybe dubstep or house music or a little bit of electronic, um, things like that. I just have a lot of energy and I think kind of set the tone for the for the video itself. So sometimes if I'm just kind of working on a video, I put on a playlist, non-copyright music, whether it's cyberpunk or uh, dance music or whatever it is. Uh, I do have a pretty wide berth of music I like. Um, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of modern country. I do like older country though. Uh, I if, if I could say that, yeah, I agree. Like the pop country, I, I don't get it uh, personally, but uh, there's some older country that I, I still really appreciate. And then of course the oldies are great. I mean, there's just no other. Uh, you, you can't get the the same good vibes from anything but Al Green. There's just there's just something about it. You know? it just Billy it just Joel. takes you back. Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, Billy Joel, another one, man. Like you can't you can't replace the classics like that. So it just depends on the mood and, and what you're going. Yeah, I gotta say, I really do like your music choices. It definitely gets me pumped when I'm watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of music that just helps out and that kind of like mechanics when it comes to that. Now, even though, you know, I'm Hispanic, I like, you know, the Hispanic music and then American music, I do listen to anime music and that really just helps me out, anyways. So. Hey, there you go. There you <laughs> yeah, go. I listen oh, to yeah. the, you know, the, uh, the Naruto songs and everything, and you're just like, yep, this is the music for me. I don't care if I don't, I don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was so funny because uh, when, when I uh, was getting ready for the call, I had a Naruto shirt on, but I was outside of the park earlier, <clears throat> and I wanted to change to a fresh shirt. So I put on my formal Naruto shirt. My, my informal one is, is... In the laundry right now, but you know. So... <laughs> in the laundry. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So we do have a question or something here in the chat. Uh, it says right here from uh, Mishka, or Miska however you want to actually say it, but thank you for the question here. It says, can certain Pokemons be broken in PvP? He says, I have a rank, or I'm sorry, I have a Santa hat Raichu, and a lot of times that Pokemon lags like five seconds on a charge move. Do you think that, you know, the custom Pokemon's route change uh, the way that they play in PvP? Or, I, you know, even for Chris, the, the question for him, do you think that it's just like, you know, lagging in, in parts of Niantic at this point? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I do think the, the, the costumes are primarily a cosmetic thing that they've implemented where they've just kind of changed a few things. Just like if, if they were to change it to a shiny, they changed the color scheme, add the sparkles and things like that. I haven't seen cosmetics actually slowing down a Pokemon, but I will say depending on what move you're using, there is a lot of desync in the game these days. So if you're using a one-turn move like Thundershock or if you have Volt Switch, which is a slower four-turn move, 
uh, you can see a lot of different kind of behaviors. Um, if you notice on my Continentals uh, Championships team, I didn't have a single Charmer and I didn't have a single Confusion user or a Volt Switch user. And it's just because uh, due to the desync that we have right now, the highest I was willing to go was a three-turn move, which is Snarl or something to, to that equivalent. And I just did not want a Hypno on my team. I didn't want Jirachi. Uh, and, it, and part of the reason is because the desync can seem like lag. So if you're having trouble with your Pokemon, maybe try to change the fast move if it doesn't destroy the composition of your team. But as far as the cosmetics, I haven't seen that be an issue. But who knows? Maybe uh, somebody will come out with a study and prove me I mean, even before the desync, I just have never been a fan of moves like Confusion, but I definitely do see the appeal. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely been a, uh, a lot of glitches that they have to change or they have to <laughs> fix when it comes down to it. Uh, it was just like, you know, whenever you were catching the Santa, the Santa Pikachu, the, the, <laughs> the Pikachu will's actual hat will follow the Pokeball. So you're like, you know, moving around. Oh, okay. Way, so so it, was, it was kind of funny. Maybe yeah. they implemented that in PvP and we just don't know about it, I guess. But <laughs> awesome. when it comes down to it, you know. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for the question there in the chat. If you guys want to ask, keep asking questions, make sure you do. And I'm sure that I see Chris's face right now, and I'm pretty sure he wants to I get both spawn here. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, no. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what are you excited for the future of this game? Like, we have so many things coming up. Mega Evolutions, uh, Gen 6, you know, any more global events that they're, you know, they're planning to do. What are, you, are you, what are you really excited for this game now that, you know, you're here? Like, there's so much, <laughs> you know. Give me, let's see, what, let's see what, what you're, what you're the, the future of this game for you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think, honestly, gentlemen, the one thing I'm most excited for is Niantic's introduction of these Premier Cups. I think that is the coolest thing. And coming from the Sylph Arena, I mean, Sylph was ahead of its time. They've, we've been doing this for over a year with these theme Cups, whitelist uh, of Pokemon that you can use. And I feel like what they did with Premier Cup was really interesting. It gives you a chance to use a lot of your max out Pokemon that aren't necessarily legendary. So it does define the meta in a way. You're not going to see the Giratinas and Articunos and things like that. And I really do think it's a it's a fun format. I'm really looking forward to Ultra Premier Cup. And then, of course, uh, I don't know if you guys know when it is, but that Pidgey Battle Day, I believe that's when they're doing the Flying Cup. So whenever they release more info about that, that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I really feel like, um, and this is just my personal two cents, I really feel like Silph Arena was ahead of its time. But as GBL introduces more and more of these t uh, theme-type cups, uh, Premier Cups, I feel like Sylph might need to change its format a little bit in order to to remain uh, viable, just because so many players will be doing it. Uh, maybe introduce cash prizes or something like that. Just that kind of stuff comes to mind. But Premier Cups, I'm super excited for. And of course, all of the events. Uh, Niantic has no shortage of events these days. And part of the comeback to YouTube, I'm considering doing PvP guides to these events. I know some players will break it down and say, you know, you need to hunt for the shiny of this or stack ultra balls for this. But I, I really think maybe there's a need in the community to do like hunt for this IV on your Zwilus or, you know, catch your, here's one I, I thought of earlier, uh, I think yesterday, catch your last Dino from your special research tomorrow, or excuse me, on Tuesday uh, during the spotlight hour so you get more keys. Just kind of niche yeah. things like that. Funny thing that you mentioned that because yep. a couple of gamings also put that tweet out today, and then everybody was like, "Well, you tell them they need this now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still I still have mine saved. Yeah, luckily, no. I I try to get go through, through the shiny checks, and I'm just like, let me just catch this. I'm like, God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I mean, I, it's, I'm all understandable when it comes down to it. Uh, I think the Flying Cup hasn't been fully announced yet. But it's just been, you know, saying we're going to be doing it. I'm sure Pichet Day is going to be, it's going to be an interesting one for GBL for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, I, don't get me wrong though. Hopefully they'll probably release also the Shiny during that time. So we'll see. That's usually when they do uh, this kind of uh, events for GBL. Uh, mm -hmm. Giving us a chance to catch th third stage evolutions or second stage evolution Shinies uh, in the wild when it comes down to it. However, uh, just like you mentioned, you know, uh, the Premier Cup and how Silt Arena needs to modify uh, the way that they do things now. Do remember, Silt Arena is a fan based community that we, you know, has grown in, in, immensely since the very first day of PvP uh, uh, being introduced into Pokemon Go. So, 
Yes, the probably, you know, having such a large community worldwide and thanks to Niantic because, you know, you can't really go out anywhere to do it, just, you know, remotely when it comes down to it. Uh, I know that, you know, having cash prices and everything seem like a cool thing to add, but I do feel like in the end, of the, in the long run, it's just going to like closely to implement the same way that what GBL is doing, you know? So just to make sure, because I mean, Salt Arena, just like you said, innovation since the very first day, you know, banning certain Pokemons, uh, using different types of, of Pokemons, those kind of things really do feel like Niantic probably took, you know, their respective uh, contents to for them, but they have to do it through their own way. But at the same time, they have to go through so many layers of like authorization and things like that. So uh, we can always have the that type of community thanks to the Salt Arena, and we can always have practices thanks to them and to their, you know, to their website and everything. So guys, make sure you check out Silt.gg. That is a wonderful place to meet so many people who are in the same community in the PvP scene. Uh, you'll meet, if you can, you can meet such a great players, just like Speedy's Chief here. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, but in, in the end of the day, Niantic will do one thing, and that's how, you know, the Pokemon company, because the Pokemon company just brings the joy in, of what Pokemon is, Niantic is just trying to implement that into our lives, and everyday lives, because yes, that's how it is. While Silt Arena, a community-based just like a VGC in the regular main series games, like what A Drive and uh, Wolfie are doing in, in their scene, even though they don't have competitive uh, Pokemon going around right now, they are you know doing their own thing to make sure that the community stays ahead or make sure they stay uh, innovated through what Pokemon battling is. You know, so if we can do that with Silt Arena, then GBL is just gonna be another way to say. Uh, we can play to make sure we're best in the entire world officially from Niantic, but um, in the end of the day, you know, the Niantic is one way, Silterun is one way, so hopefully uh, they get to that point, and I need more passes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all the time. All the time. Oh my goodness, I hate it when I do that. Uh, yeah, I think the only thing holding back Sylph is, um, I mean, Niantic Pokemon Go already gives you, you know, you get the chance at Pokemon, you get Stardust, Self, you lose Stardust. By the <laughs> yeah. That you're probably going to use once. And trust me, I love Self GG. It is so much fun fighting with all these very talented trainers, and you get to see their teams. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, I think that's the only thing holding them back. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure Niantic, like again, they have taken what Self Arena has created and want to implement mm -hmm. it to their own, but they want to do it their own way. Now, Leaderboards, you know, came out and that's basically the same thing that what Silt Arena is. Uh, they're now doing Premier Cups, which, you know, bans legendaries and now these types of other cups that they're doing. I'm sure that, you know, with time, they will learn to do their own thing, but Silt Arena will hopefully will always be there for the community. So we'll see I how <laughs> that goes for the future <laughs> of them too. Um, now, Chief, let me ask you, uh, what is your favorite Mega Evolution that you're uh, hopeful to get or have already ready to go? Oh man, put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I, I am such an addict for PvP, I honestly would have to ask you guys what the move sets are. Um, some of them look really cool, uh, but I would, I would go for utility over kind of the, the, the okay. look and the flex. Um, okay. I'll tell you, something I am really intrigued by is Mega Altaria. Really? It's yeah. it's a dragon fairy. So it's a dragon that resists dragon. And I mean, what is that thing weak to? I mean, of course it's weak to ice. Maybe but it loses well, what its else? four times uh, weakness to ice and then just gains double. So it's a little bit yeah. different when it comes down to Mega Evolutions. Mega Altaria would be a, probably still be a defining Pokemon in PvP when it comes down to it. I myself want to see like Pokemons that usually don't have that kind of niche uh, in the metas right now. So Something like uh, maybe Mega Pinsir. Uh, Pinsir has, you know, it's, yes. a, it's a good Pokemon that can, you know, max out to a good percentage, but it doesn't have the moveset to, you know, go through it. Maybe the Mega Evolution can give it that kind of niche to say, hey, you know, I can find it be viable. And if they do follow the CP uh, requirements, you know, they max us out to maybe the Ultra League or the uh, the Master League when it comes down to it. So things like uh, Mega Venusaur or Above Us Now, which we already seen uh, previously. Agron, cool. Heracross, you know, those kind of Pokemons that you think that are coming through. But I do, at least my personal favorite would either be Mega Gallade or Mega Gardevoir and see how okay. those fare out. Uh, even though they don't have a t type change, they do have, you know, some kind of like the coolest evolutions I've seen around. So 
we'll see how that one really works out when it comes down to it, you know? So, yeah. Chris, what about you? Dude, Metacham. Uh, oh, yeah. Really to see, because supposedly, like, the people that have been crunching the numbers on it, supposedly it maxes out a hundo right at 24.95. So I'm really interested to see how that shakes up the Ultra League meta um, if if we're able to use them in, you know, Premier Cups and everything. Because, uh, I don't know, it, it just looks like a really fun one to use. We don't really have that many good fighters in uh, Ultra League. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chief, do you, what do you think? Like, aside from Mega Terry, have you thought of maybe of uh, another one that you think they have the niche to, to get That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with you, actually, uh, Luis. I, I think there's a, there's a lot of opportunity for things that don't get a lot of love to actually do really well. I'm intrigued by uh, Mega Sableye, because Sableye is one of my favorite Pokemon in Great League. I really want to see what it can do. If it can reach Ultra League, that'd be awesome. Um, but again, it's going to give us even more to IV Hunt, <laughs> which is going to be nuts. But but to your point, Chris, yeah, Ultra League, I, I found this out about myself uh, this season. I really love having a counter user on my team. And for my Continentals Championships, the first one I picked was Medicham. That was my first overall pick. And I, I really think Ultra League needs a good counter user. There's Obstagoon and there's Toxicroak. And you're a madman to use Toxicroak. Obstagoon is kind of iffy. So if we can get a good Medicham in Ultra League, it's going to be great. Now, th those are like the underdogs when it comes down to a lot of the, uh, the actual Mega Evolutions when it comes down to it. But remember, we're also getting, you know, Mega Requesa, Mega yes. Mewtwo. You know, Primal Kyogre, Primal Garden, which, you know, they're probably one of the coolest Mega Evolutions I've seen. Uh, but those kind of Pokemons, you know, they're already viable thanks to the moveset that they've been receiving. Do you think that even the most powerful legendary Pokemons can actually have, like, a new niche thanks to, to their Mega Evolutions? Uh, absolutely. And you mentioned Rayquaza. Uh, I think the only thing holding that back is the fast move. Dragon Tail and Air Slash are just not very good moves. If you give Mega Rayquaza something like Dragon Breath, that thing is going to be a monster. It's going to melt everything in its power. <laughs> and I really feel like the Mega Evolutions are going to be so overpowered. Uh, I'm really curious to see how Niantic handles it. Yeah. I think if you guys have seen the CP work on Mega Mewtwo, I think Y, it's got like 5600 CP or something. Just something just got like it's like God tier. Well, that may be what ties in, you know, the new level cap when you were discussing True. that. Uh, you know, it breaks out to the 5,000s and we know we could have Pokemon. Like, there's only one Pokemon right now without Mega Evolution that can reach that much. And, you know, it's one of those Pokemon that you don't want to use because it's like the, <laughs> the worst Pokemon to use. Uh, yeah. But th that's, that's the differences, you know, it's like... Will level 50 will actually get us to that point? Do we have to reach that level before we go through? Bye bye, Rakosa. <laughs> and then, you know, it will that actually, you know, implement it to what Mega Evolution says now? Following the CP charts is probably like the best way to, to go about it. But, um, you know, Pokemon Go is always innovating when it comes down to the releases of new Pokemon or new uh, mechanics in the game. So maybe we'll see something different. Maybe we'll see something that uh, can change PvP forever. We don't know yet, but, you know, it's coming. So we just have to wait for the right moment and the right time. When everybody, when once Mega Evolutions comes around, I'm sure that even you, Speedy Chief, will be like, okay, this is the meta, this is what we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's <laughs> talk about this Pokemon and this Pokemon. And I'm just like, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I know he's been talking primarily about PvP, but I feel like Shadows kind of revolutionized the raiding game in a way. I mean, if you have a Hundo, Shadow, Tyranitar, the DPS is just crazy. I'm really excited to see these Megas in raids as well. Yeah. And how that trend That's going to be nuts. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, earlier, actually this morning, I got a 96 uh, Machop from a Rocket one. Whoa. Uh, I enough. am more advocate of the Hondos, and I don't like seeing the no ones of it. So, and oh, it's actually no. my very first Hondo Machamp, too. I never really got Oh, no. One. So, yes, you will probably kill me, but I did purify this Pokemon. You're I one of those. Be... <laughs> yes, I am one Guys, of those. It is the purified <laughs> podcast. Did you? It is a purified podcast. Uh, I, two things. I have purified a Machamp. Uh, so Chris, hate me if, if you want to. Um, <laughs> the second thing, guys, did you see that? I, I don't know where it was, but I saw a text string where somebody was in a chat and they got a Hundo Shadow Mewtwo. Go yes. And then their yeah. buddy was like, go ahead and purify it. And they freaking did. No. <laughs> and they were like, I was just kidding. I was joking. 
why did you do that? And they were just freaking out. Oh, and it's just, no. oh, oh, my friends and you can't. That. You can't take that one back. That sucks. <laughs> See, if I would have gotten something that was coming close to a Honda Mewtwo, I would have actually purified it just because, again, I like the Honda part of it, even if it's like a niche for PvP when it comes to I can it. see that. But not a Hondo just by shadow. <laughs> it was a Hondo shadow, yeah. Oh there's no God. reason to purify Oh, my God. No I reason mean, like, at all. Especially look at the shadow Mewtwo. I mean, we each got some pretty decent ones. I mean, I got lucky enough to get a 93. It would be a Hondo if I... You know, did that, but it's gonna be doing more damage as a shadow. You know, and it looks way cooler. I mean, yeah, to, I like the little electric. To, yeah, things. I know, right? To the contradict, you know, what shadows can do. You know, being weak to even stronger moves when it comes down to it, it's like it's kind yeah. of like the thing. But if you know how to well balance your teams with the shadow Pokemon that you have, or you know, all shadows if you want to, <laughs> um, you know, you can see that. You know, shadows can be a thing. Now, do you think that Niantic should also implement that to purify Pokemons? Uh, you know, purify the whole you know niche to actually playing the Tingle Rocket is to catch the Pokemons and purify them. You know, or release them when it comes down to it. But um, you think that purify Pokemons can also have that kind of busted po po part of it if you purify them? Do you think maybe it should be higher than Shadow or maybe just a bit lower? What do you think, Chief? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. And it, again, it all goes back to the direction that, that uh, Niantic wants to take it. Because I, I didn't we read somewhere like a while back that purified Pokemon would do more damage to shadows? Or am I just kind of making that up? No, I'm pretty. You, yeah, you're right. That. You're right. Okay. Because I, I feel like if you were to go into a match and you were fighting a, a shadow Machamp and you pull out a purified Sableye and you hit it with return, I mean, it's already going to almost one-shot it, but if it did more damage, that'd be kind of cool. Like, a battle with shadows versus light kind of take on its own role in PvP, which would actually be really interesting. Yeah. So you sure. could have a... Just imagine, like, in a tournament, um, you know, the Shoutcasters are going over the match, and your uh, opponent's final Pokemon comes out, like, oh, no, this isn't good. He's going to lose uh, the two shields. doesn't matter what he does here. And then you pull out your purified Pokemon, and they're like, holy crap, this changes the whole game. This is it. This is, you know, this is the truth right here. So yeah, <laughs> maybe there's potential for that. I do think Purify doing more damage to Shadows would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do like Return on some Pokemon, but it's mostly a product of their attack stat. Yeah. Uh, Sableye with Return is, of course, overpowered as hell. And it's because the attack is so high. So yeah. I, I don't know if they necessarily need, like, a general buff, but I think the Purify versus Shadow is kind of... Yeah, that's the whole niche when it comes down to purifying shadows. So I do like that. I mean, I really like the the way that you that you handle that, and or you know how you think purify can actually be something better. Maybe just to shadows, but maybe one of these days we'll actually get like you know a meta full of shadows, and people are gonna be like, uh oh, that's not that good. <laughs> but then you know, the purifies come out because that's actually the next part of the meta, and then you know purify against shadow. Maybe that's you know that the light versus dark that we want to. Maybe Niantic, here you go. Here's another. Good idea for your next cup thing. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, in the, uh, what's it called? The Sylph Menace again, because they've been taking out the shadow. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I know. They got to figure that out. Maybe one shadow per team, or maybe, I don't know, certain shadows are allowed. I, I know they banned them because it just changes the mechanics of the game. Yeah. But it'd be really cool to have. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, but yeah, that's... Well, we still have a couple more questions, but the, one of the things that we, you know, that we already talked about a lot is that, you know, your content creation and all that, you know, you, we were wondering, you know, why you were not putting content as much as you used to. Uh, and, you know, you skip a couple of cups just to make sure that you, of course, you're probably focusing on Continentals when it comes down to oh, it. Yeah. So, you know, now that season two is over and season three is looming to be announced, you know, the world championship coming in the next few months. Um, you know, what are you, what are your plans for the rest of 2020 aside from what, you know, you already told us, but, uh, what do you hope to accomplish? What do you, you know, what do you want to concentrate, you know, how to return to, you know, get the metas or anything like that? What, what are you, what are you I'm hopeful for the rest of 2020 when it comes down to it? Yeah. So if I could take this bull, uh, by two different horns, uh, I will say the, the first horn and the first side of it was the Silph Arena. And I feel like. Uh, getting to the North American Championships <clears throat> and then being able to, to win that and moving on to Worlds, I, I do think that is a competitive goal for me to do as well as I can Worlds. Um, we're going to see how that, that happens. Uh, I, there's a small part of me that is a little bit nervous about publishing all this content because uh, it'll kind of give insight into my thought processes. 
Uh, for example, I, I already have it planned to go back and watch the streams and watch the Latin American finals, uh, watch the European and the Asia Pacific ones, because I want to see how these other players uh, like to play, what kind of team compositions they have, what they like to lead, uh, what their different strategies are, um, how good they are at sack swaps, everything like that. So there's going to be a lot of studying that's going on. But again, it's not it's not like I'm doing anything that a lot of these other top battlers aren't already doing. I mean, throw technical, arrow, Toshi going on stream, and they reveal everything they're thinking, and they're still like best in the world. So yeah. there's probably no reason for me to have that kind of uh, that that thing holding me back. So we'll see how it goes. But in terms of go battle league, the other half of the of the question, I feel like uh, the past two seasons getting to rank ten has been has been tough. Uh, it's been designed that way. I feel like the floodgates really opened the last week or so of season two. And I saw a lot of people hitting rank ten within the last week. Uh, which is really great. But uh, after two seasons of doing it, I have a lot of confidence that I can do it. I actually took, uh, as well in my preparation for Continentals, I didn't play GBL for two and a half weeks. I just totally put it down because it made me rage because everything was, was so random and it felt like there was no way I could win. You know, I lead Altaria to Bassidon or Azumarill to Venusaur. So frustrating. But uh, I was able to pick it back up. And in, I think, four or five days, I climbed the rest of the way to rank 10. And... I have a lot of confidence in myself to do that this season as well. So I'm probably not going to put as much pressure on myself. Uh, part of the reason that um, the content hasn't been coming out is just because as a creator, you kind of set the tone for a lot of things. And I know a lot of people like like to watch the content and I just want to give people good advice. And if I can't pull off a 5-0 with a team, then is it really worth showing? And then, you know, the whole other question of, of that is, or do you really want to just make videos of you winning all the time, or do you want to make videos because you enjoy it and people like to watch you? Exactly. So I definitely am going to take GBL a little bit easier and then try to compete as well as I can. So. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Um, well, we still have another half of the year, so hopefully, you know that kind of uh, content that we will be hopefully expecting soon <laughs> will be uh, you know helpful uh, to what GBL and South Arena could be, you know. So. But, you know, we're excited for uh, Worlds and, you know, whatever GBL is in store for us for the rest of the time. Uh, but, yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> uh, Chris, you want to actually ask him the next question there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I I know that your icon, you know, is Ash in the, in the hat and everything. Uh, is he actually your favorite character from the Pokemon series? Or does somebody else uh, warm your heart a little bit more? That's cool. Uh, that's a that's a cool question. So, yeah, no, I've actually never been asked that. I'm kind of feeling like I'm on the spot. Here. So, um, <laughs> no, no, not at all. I I feel like Ash, in the same way that you have uh, Harry Potter, uh, you have a character that's just somebody that you can relate to, who's just trying to do the best they can in every situation they're in, and then you have that that same motto of never giving up. You know, even his first Pokemon with Pikachu was such a struggle. I mean, nobody's forgotten that Pikachu wanted nothing to do with Ash. It was it was just really tough. And his goal was to be a Pokemon master. And if you think about it on sort of simple terms, uh, if you if you set out to do something you're really interested in, and then the first time you tried to do it, there's just so much resistance. Most people would give up. Yeah. And it's just kind of a testament to if you try something and you stick with it. And you, and you really feel that you're right for it and you give it your all, you can actually make a lot of progress. So, yeah, Ash is definitely one of my favorites. I always thought this was probably the coolest Elite Four, you know, going all the way back to Kanto. I'm sorry, I'm a 90s kid. Um, going all the way back to Kanto, uh, Lance was the best. But, yeah, I think Ash is probably my favorite main character. I just, I was never able to really like Brock or Misty. I, I think they're fine, <laughs> but they're not my favorites. <laughs> You know, I'm going to tie in to the fact that you have Ash uh, because Ash actually finally won a championship. Spoiler yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. it, it's a funny story too, guys, because I was making that logo uh, actually because Tampa was, uh, our, excuse me, our Tampa Pokemon Go community was, was raising money for feeding Tampa Bay, to feed the homeless in the area. And I made that logo and halfway through making it, I was like, man, this logo sucks. Nobody's going to like this. It's just a lot of work. I was having to do the colors and everything. It was just kind of a pain. And I kind of, you know, struggled through it. I did a few other shirts as well. We were able to raise some money for, uh, for Feeding Tampa, which is great. But I needed a logo for the channel. So I just kind of picked it up and went with it. And it's, it's worked out. Until Niantic says, or uh, excuse me, until Pokemon Go company says, hey, you can't use that. It's got to happen. <laughs> hey, you know, everybody has their own niche when it comes down to uh, their 
actual logos and all that stuff. Like, even for me, at least one of my favorite uh, characters in the Pokemon series is probably Steven, which is, you know, a great yes. champion in, in all around. Uh, you know, Metagross, just like top notch as everything. I just love that Pokemon so much. I have a best buddy, you know, Hondo, ready to go for anything. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but either way, you know, it's like, it, like just like to say, you know, uh, for for us at least, we see Ash as somebody who has struggled, you know, along the way through so many, you know, years of battling through leagues and trying to make sure he becomes the champion. If not, or not. Now he did. Now he's you know wanting to go to world. So maybe you can relate a little bit to that too, <coughs> since you know spoiler alert. Yeah. If you haven't seen Pokemon Journeys, he is trying to be the world champion now. So <laughs> hey, uh, I just need I just need Ash to win it, and then I feel like I have a chance. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Come on, Ash. Tidings, tidings. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Chris, you can ask this next question. This is just a funny question. What oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, I, I know we've been putting you on the spot, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this question. This was from my communities, just to let you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was from my boy Zombie. Okay. Sour cream and onion chips, laser Pringles. Wait, come again? What kind of chips? <laughs> Sour cream and onion, laser okay. Pringles. Which one? It's got to be Lay's, man. Okay. There you go. Okay. Right. We're yeah. Good. We're, yeah. Good. We're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, that's good. Uh, guys, did you see? I, I think I saw a meme. It was uh, a Pringles can, and they were ramen flavored. Oh yeah, I saw that. that actually... What? Dude, they made like, baconator what? lays or baconator uh, Pringles recently, and I was yeah. like, "That's a heart attack in a can." <laughs> Dude, you go. Dude that, that's that's America. Uh, no. <laughs> Hey, it could actually be Japan. You never, never know. Trust hey, me. yeah, yeah. Japan actually, can yeah. actually, I can actually see a ramen pickle there. So. <laughs> Good point. Oh, Good point. Is. All right. So to wind down some few things, and we're about to actually head into, of course, our recaps and what the news is about for this week. I want to make sure that we get one last question to uh, to Chief here, and you know, and we want to see, and we want to actually want to ask, you know, which Pokemon surprised you in when you were using it for Continentals? Like, what was like your best? Pokemon that you thought that could maybe destroy the meta or maybe something that people were not expecting. What was your what were your thoughts when you became like when you wanted when you went to Continentals? Yeah, so my favorite moment of uh, of the draft. So when we, when we actually did the draft, you know, there were uh, six banned Pokemon and then we did a snake draft to, to take our picks. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually wasn't watching the live stream. I was actually just kind of in my war room uh, trying to figure out what to get next. Uh, how to counter my opponents and still build a good team. So I watched the, dra the draft stream afterwards. My favorite moment of that was, okay, Metacham, good pick. I like that. And the Shoutcasters looked at Golbat, and they were like, uh, okay, that makes sense too. And then they saw Lapras, like, oh, man, that's an awesome pick. Uh, and then they saw Loma Muck, and they were like, wow, I can't believe Muck was still available. That's a great pick. And then I picked Fortress. I just watched King, like, shift in his chair. It's kind of like, and of course in his mind, you know, he's too nice to stay in his mind. He's like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> and then I picked Blossom. And again, everybody in the room, I saw all the cameras like, wait, no Mud Boy? No, no this, no that? And Kakuna, Kakuna dived in and saved my reputation. He said, oh yeah, Blossom's a sweetheart pick from the Continental's preliminaries. And I felt like I needed a grass because I was deadly weak to uh, ground without it. And, uh, <laughs> and that just kind of worked out. But Fortress was something that I, I kind of like picked it up and put it in my, my shopping cart. And I was walking through the store, you know, trying to decide if I wanted it or not. And then I got to the register uh, the day of the championships. And I was like, man, I don't know if I really want this thing, but I'm stuck with it. <laughs> so uh, Fortress had a lot of interesting play, a lot of play that people didn't really expect. It did really well for me against, against House Stark. And I will say this in, in the video when I upload it, but... His Mew was really hard for me to counter. I think I had Golbat with Shadow Ball, and that was probably my best chance because he had Wild Charge on it. So my water types, uh, everything else was going to work. And I was actually able to bring Fortress in and just bug bite down his Mew with two shields, and that was like a huge moment for me. And then the last uh, the last round, the championships against Dunebug, I led Fortress in game one, and it just totally threw a wrench into everything that he had planned because he didn't bring Venusaur on his, on his team of three. I think he had uh, Gallade, which is a psychic type, weak to bug. I mean, it is fighting, so I guess it's neutral. And then you have Frostlass, uh, ice type, which is weak to the mirror shot from uh, Fortress. And his third Pokemon was Obstagoon, a dark type, weak to bug. And it was just the perfect pick in that, in that sweet spot moment. And I'm actually working on best buddying it right now 
Uh, I will <laughs> like, best buddy at four battles because it'll push the CP over 1500, but I just want the ribbon on it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta find one thing that helped you out uh, in the long run, and well, here we are. Champion it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this past year, it's just been giving me a lot of trouble, so <laughs> it's gonna give me more after you. Oh, yeah, yeah uh, uh, but two O butters was one of the shoutcasters, and he actually used a shadow fortress in GBL. I have a video on that coming soon, and it is nuts. Yeah, I, I've, been I, trying, I've been trying to get a good uh, like one from Arlo, but fortunately, well, that's I mean, the first the Chinese, thing. But you know, it's just getting a good one for PvP has been somewhat okay. Hopefully, I'll get one eventually, and then of course, goodbye Stardust. But you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. spammy, so spammy. All right, so uh, I think this will be it for the interview, but we do have a little bit more of recaps to go. So, Chief, if you're up for it, of course, we'll have, of course, want to have you to the news and updates that we have for this week, of course. Um, aside from GoFest just ending, we do have way more stuff to talk about. So if you want to, you're good for it? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to give as, as many helpful points as I can. All right, well, guys, thank you so much for uh, for part for being part of the interview. If you want to keep on listening, for sure, just you know, we'll keep on going. All right, so let's go ahead and go a little bit of recap right now. Because since we just finished GoFest, we gone through the shinies, we gone through PvP months, we gone through everything that we want to do. We are now in the first week of the Ultra Unlock, which is Dragon Week. So, um, how have you guys been with that? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you're kind of covering your face. I feel like you you have something to say. I gotta say, the amount of gibbles has been nice. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I don't know. It, it is really cool how many PvP Pokemon there are. Uh, I mean, we haven't really gotten any good dragon events in a long, long, long time. And even when we did have it, there weren't that many dragon Pokemon in the game yet. Um, so it's definitely really cool to see, you know, gibble raids and just all these cool Pokemon to hunt right now. Yeah, what about you, Chief? Yeah, I feel like the dragons bring the people out. I mean, they, they bring people out to raids, they bring people out to hunt for them. There's something about it. It's just one of the coolest typings in the game. And I know uh, some people have been kind of criticizing, like, a lot of trap inch spawns, a lot of Swablu spawns. Uh, guys, you got to catch them. You need the candy for it, uh, for whatever you're going to evolve for PvP. Uh, yeah. I'm very happy with the amount of Dratinis and Bagon that I'm seeing. Um, those are both uh, good. I mean, uh, Dragonite's great in Master League. And then uh, Bagon has a, a mega evolution that's coming down the, down the uh, down the tube here pretty soon, so that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, Rayquaza again is another mega evolution before. Uh, I I've only caught I think two Gibbles and two Dinos, so I'm not super happy with it. We still have a few more days. And just got to keep on keep so on. Let me ask you: Did those Dinos were from the research or from the wild? Yeah, guys, I, I'm such an addict. I actually got a notification on my phone at 3 a.m. last night that there was a Dino at the gas station up the street for me. So I hopped in the car and I went and got it. <laughs> it exists. It exists. It's a real thing. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Yeah, I didn't believe it. Why, why am I, I in Tampa? What? <laughs> Jesus, goodness. Um, yeah, no, dinos have been scares like way 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 lower than you think about it there's a lot of people right now on twitter that are just like they're going off they're going off because you know dino is supposed to be like the one pokemon that you want especially since you know new shiny new life <laughs> uh but still it's like one of those things where you're just like why are, why do you just feel like we all can only get him in like eggs and all stuff and you, know, you know we had you know all three of us are in the same area in the same you know proximity area and we had the hurricane or tropical storm coming up and um behind us in the last few hours um so we had windy weather for the for the yes. first time in whatever months we had uh you know the game open <laughs> uh but that was nice because you know all the dragons were boosted and you know dragquasas were boosted gables were boosted you know dratinas were boosted um still not a single dino not, not yeah. Well. Not, not nothing out there <laughs> so um, yeah it's it's tough sledding it and if anybody listening to this is is kind of uh, frustrated with not getting enough dino or enough gibble you're not alone i, I hatched nine seven k eggs today and i ca i got a horsey a swablu a bagon there's a bunch of a bunch of you know a bunch of stuff i didn't yeah, yeah. So you know what i've been hearing a lot on twitter a lot of people have been saying uh go battle league is the way to get dino not not hatching seven k's so always go battle league wow <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it, it's it's been one of those things, and I'm sure that because now you know shiny Dino is a thing, and hopefully he's still in the in the encounter pool in Go Battle League. Time to bust up those great league Pokemons again, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sure they're never gonna hatch one. I'm hopeful, but you know my egg luck is better than Chris's when it comes down to it. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my gosh. I I'm, I mean I put the grind on eggs. Trust me, even though I'm shouldn't be, but I mean I like I like just hatching eggs, you know, especially when I'm at work, just like drifting around everywhere. I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, um, you know, week uh, week one, everybody's been going off like dragon here, dragon there, draquaza here, raider, remote raiding, as you guys probably already seen through most of the podcasts live here. Uh, I've been doing just like all the Rayquazas, all the Gibble, so I mean, I want the Shiny. I mean, I've been getting Shiny Rayquaza, but Shiny Gibble has been evading me since Skullfest, and I'm just like, please, <laughs> please. Uh -huh. But it's kind of nice to actually see a little change, because just like Chris said, Dragons have never been the spotlight for anything, and this is the first time in four years of the game that we actually get to experience having more and more Dragons than usual, so... It's nice to do things. Um, I wish I would have probably maybe put Axio in some kind of way to encounter it because that's a holdout Pokemon for a lot of people right now. And it's a Pokemon that you barely even see if you actually do get to that point. So um, unless you hash yeah. it, you know, kind of the things. But um, it's kind of nice. I mean, right now Dinos should be the, the spotlight, but Rayquazas is more than enough for a lot of people to say, hey, let's do this thing. Let's get this done, you know? So. Oh. <laughs> All right, so... That is mostly our recaps. There's not much, of course, we could talk about Golfers again, but we have actually, you know, seen and gone through Golfers. I think we we are way past that, and, you know, we are here for more news and updates, for sure. So, for today's research topics, Chris, do you want to talk about the very first announcement? Uh, really quick. Is it cool if I check my last dino? Oh, yeah, there we go. He has okay. his dino. He can still check it for Shiny. He doesn't have to catch it. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get this. Oh my gosh, this is the hard part. Drum. Uh, no, no. <laughs> oh my god, I, I would have gone ham. I would have walked out of the room right now. Just his because camera. <laughs> yeah, I'll be oh like, goodbye, guys. Hello. <laughs> okay. So, as Speedish Chief mentioned earlier, we are getting the Magikarp Community Day 2. It's going to be wonderful. I'm, I'm actually excited for it. Yeah, Magic Card Community Day is our August Community Day for this year. So leaping over mountains after living so many years, surviving in the body of water no matter how populated or polluted it is, uh, being an easy target for predators, and then of course, you know, Magic Card being the spotlight for this. So I know, Chief. Um, what do you, I mean, I know that. Well, actually, before I actually get your opinion on this, because we actually have to make sure that people know. Uh, it's going to be on Saturday, August 8th, so really quickly, it's actually going to be next weekend. On Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time, so again, another six hour event. Uh, Magicka will be, of course, appearing in the wild. If you're lucky, you get a shiny Magicka, shiny CD raids, of course, you guys know this. <laughs> uh, evolve it uh, during the two hour afterwards day of the event to get uh, Gyarados with Aqua Tail, which PvP wise is actually a very good move for Magicka, or I'm sorry, for Gyarados. Uh, take a few snapshots, and of course you'll get a surprise, which we already know what probably is at this point. Uh, it takes a bit of candy to evolve magic cards into Gyarados, so make sure that you pine up everything, every single one you see. I'm just gonna go plus everything that I see, so it's not much difference there. <laughs> <laughs> um, there will be a special one-time purchase ticket uh, for August Community Day, including 30 Ultra Balls, an Elite far, uh, Charge TM, and 6 Star Pieces, and an Incense. So, I mean, you know, $13 is not too bad. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there will be a $1 special research featuring a special story making a splash. You know, follow Professor Willow as he learns the magic art and his epic evolution journey. And then, of course, the bonuses of this community today will be three times star uh, cash stardust. And yes. uh, incest activated during the event will last three hours. All right, so we went through what magic art is and magic art community today. So, Chief, what I, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're also excited for this because as a competitor, you want that Stardust, right? Yeah, I mean, triple Stardust, it, it wouldn't matter if it was if it was Pidgey or Swablu or uh, Weedle, it doesn't matter. Uh, triple Stardust, you're going to go out there and try to grind. Uh, so my personal goal is to set a one-day catch record. Uh, and the reason for that is because 
Um, the Magikarp catch rate is actually pretty high. It's actually going to be pretty easy to catch. There's going to be so many of them you can catch it with normal Pokeballs. And, uh, yeah, I just think for the six hours, you just have to give it your all, no matter what it is. I will say a couple of, of semi-advanced tips you guys might already, already be familiar with. Uh, have we found out if we're getting three-hour lures or, or are they just one hour or 30 minutes? Uh, lures are not going to be part of the events uh, anytime soon. They're going with the three-hour uh, incest. So every time, okay. so you can stack up your incest and you know you have like a twenty four hours only spending like five or six depending on what it is. But um, because of the whole pandemic and the whole why health problem that we're having right now, they don't want us to go to specific places, so they won't actually activate yeah. for three hours if you put a lure down. Uh, but you know compensation, we do have something that you can be at home if you want to. So. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so in terms of of lures, if you can get to a safe place where you can get a pokey stop and you just want to maybe sit for for a little while while you're eating lunch or just taking a break. If you live in the South in Florida where we are, it gets really, really hot. So if you need to kind of pace yourself at a park, uh, I do think it's worth it to drop a glacial lure because it might give you second tier, third tier evolutions. And the triple stardust is just going to be crazy with that. Um, secondly, I think it's important to uh, stack your catches so as you know, once you encounter something, you can run away from it and it saves it in your box. You can do that up to a hundred times. I have been kind of crawling the internet, trying to figure out what the tasks are for August. I know some of it's changed a little bit because it is dragon week. So you have kind of some tasks that are specific for dragons and some that aren't, oh, yeah. but if you can stack a uh, second tier, third tier evolutions in your box, a third tier evolution is worth th- a 3,375 dust. When you have the triple dust and the star piece. Um, so, for example, for myself, I've stacked four Rhydons and I think eight Gravelers in my box. And uh, if you catch the second stage evolutions, I think Combuskin is an option. A couple other ones as well. Save those until Saturday because once you catch that, it's just going to make a huge impact on your Stardust savings. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, just like you mentioned, we'll actually be talking about the what the research encounters are soon. Um, but actually, if you go to uh, Leak Duck, they have a chart of all the research tags that you can get from stops. And, you know, he lists most of the ones that you can get um, through most of it. I am looking through the evolution ones you can get from Winner Ray, you get a Monferno. Mm-hmm. Um, from the Hatch and Egg, you can get a pol- you can get a Polar World. A Combustion from Evolve a Pokemon. And then... Actually, those are the only three that are triple evolution or, you know, second stage evolution or first stage evolutions. After that, I don't see anything that may want you to catch. But, I mean, if you can stack them, of course, go ahead. Um, But, yeah, those are the only evolutions. ones. Before, we had Gravital on the stuff. And I do remember getting a couple of them through the research breakthrough boxes. But I guess they they said, no, thank you for the rest of it. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. All right. So, yes, community day is going to be pretty good. I'm probably just going to stay at home, even though, you know, I have the Stardust to to want, but... Um, yeah, yeah, Mr. 4 million over here. Uh, 3.7. <laughs> I've been spending all that Stardust. Uh, I, didn't Dude, I that. just hit 1 mil. <laughs> <laughs> all right, while we get this giveaway going, of course, uh, let's talk about what the next announcement is, and, of course, it will be the makeup day for day, uh, for GoFest. Now, as you guys know, and probably from our experiences, GoFest on day one was kind of glitchy in some of those biomes. Um, I'm sure, Chief, you experienced that throughout your uh, GoFest experience. Uh, but they do want to, you know, make up for that, especially because it happened all around the world, aside from probably the Californian or uh, Pacific's time. Just because they finally got the glitches out of the way, thank God. <laughs> uh, but just like they mentioned, they did announce that they're going to be a makeup day, which will be on Sunday, August 16th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. local time. So it's only going to be a few hours. Uh, whatever players who purchase a Pokemon Go Fest tickets in the, around the world. So uh, the three habitats that are going to appear during the time will be the fire habitat, the water habitat, and the friendship habitat. Um, we do, I mean, they do say, you know, we appreciate, you know, your patience and the passion for Pokemon Go. And, you know, there will be a special free box featuring two incest and two remote ray passes. So, you know, claim it whenever you feel like it. Uh, gift uh, open during the event can, op- uh, can obtain rare candies. Why don't you just say guarantee, just like you were supposed to? <laughs> and then incest during the activity will last one hour. So, 
um, you know, having a makeup day for those to kind of uh, kind of glitches. Thank you, Niantic. You know, hashtag thank you, Niantic. You always listen to the community. But what are your thoughts? Like, you guys think that you know we're getting what we needed from the beginning, or? I mean, uh, personally, I just remember I was definitely cursing a lot at my phone uh, for not being able to click on the things from the incense, especially during the fire, because I really wanted to get a really good zero attack uh, Lolan Marowak, personally. Um, but, I mean, it got cleared up fairly soon, and then the only issue was not being able to uh, see the friendship for a while, um, which I wasn't too, too concerned about. I mean, I'm one of the people that just keeps using uh, rare candies all the time, so I, like, have enough space um, but yeah, I'm definitely excited for it. Um, I know some people are uh, really just sad that they don't get to click on more gibbles, pure letter. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, we didn't really get any issues during that. So I definitely understand us not getting it back, you know, um, definitely hyped for I mean, it. For me, I, it's mostly, you know, gibble is, is already here with me. So <laughs> I'm just like, oh, you guys know I'm doing this gibble right, right now. But um, yeah, no, the other ones will be pretty nice. What about you, Chief? Do you think that, you know, this is more than enough for, for us players. Yeah, I, I think it's great. And just to piggyback off what uh, what you and Chris were saying, <clears throat> I do think Niantic listened to the community. There were a lot of reports of outages. Uh, for me, significantly, I'm surprised to hear, Chris, that it was, it was fire hour for you. For me, it was actually friendship hour. I couldn't even get into my friends list at all. Yeah. I kept oh, on yeah. opening it, and it just said it was stuck. And I think I saw on Twitter, correct me if I'm wrong, but at G2G Media actually confirm with Niantic that we're able to open 30 gifts and get those 30 rare candies. So it's not quite 200, like we hoped, but the 30 is still really nice. So I'm excited to get those rare candies, especially with all these rare dragons like Axew and Gibble that we just can't seem to get enough candy for already. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I did remember actually having problems during the Fraction Biome. And I, do, invite people, I, yeah. I will probably never forget this moment because it was like at the tail end last few minutes of the biome and then we finally got the chance to get into our friends list and we were like, oh cool, we actually got the bonus. It's three <laughs> minutes before it ends. <laughs> <I'm> like, cool. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to do anything. So, <laughs> so I mean, it was nice. Uh, I do have quite a bit of rare candy, so it wasn't really that much niche that I needed at the moment. Um, I usually save it for anything that I want to power up instantly. Uh, especially, you know, Pokemons that I don't get the candy for. Uh, but yeah, no, that's... I, I do thank Niantic for this and, you know, having to go through a little bit extra experience what GoFest was really like, especially if you have bought a ticket, because everybody here did. <laughs> um, yeah, it will be nice. And, and th again, hashtag thank you Niantic um, to, for listening to us when it comes down to it. So... Last but not least, we do have a little bit final news here that they announced not too long ago, and this was the August Breakthrough Box and Spotlight Hours uh, for the month of August. So um, it's time for new, a new month, new research, just like uh, Speedy has said. Uh, you know, August, uh, Saturday, August 1st, which was yesterday, <laughs> uh, to Tuesday, September 1st, uh, Scraggy, the Shedding Pokemon, will be available on Research Breakthrough Box now. Scraggy, it's been a holdout Pokemon for a lot of people because it's only been in GBL and the uh, one of the events that we have with Dark type Pokemon and the incest. So it's kind of nice to see it. It's kind of nice that you need the candy. I, they did not mention extra candy of anything. They just say, "Hey, here you go. You can catch it. Get to your box." <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Uh, you know, Scraggy being an awesome Pokemon. I do want my Hondo. I don't know if you guys want to, of course, but I'm pretty sure it's, I already know the answer at this point, but still, go ahead. Always Hondo. <laughs> Always. <clears throat> so I will say Scrafty is a really interesting Pokemon. In terms of GBL, uh, being a dark type, it is weak to fairy and fighting, so it does have a lot of kind of threats in, in Great League. But if you can get it into Ultra League, it's actually a Pokemon that can beat things like Lapras or Giratina, um, other kind of psychic types like Cresselia. It actually stands a chance as long as you can dodge the Moonblast uh, because of the foul play that it has. And then you can actually, uh, excuse me, you can actually further boost your attack with Power Up Punch. So it's actually a pretty good Pokemon to have. For Ultra League, you do want the Hundo. It's going to max out just under 2,500. So if you uh, if you have any lucky traits standing by, maybe it's a good time to I got caught out a bit of them, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, so August, I mean, aside from all the Ultra Unlocks that we have, so we have so much to, to worry about, uh, we also have our Spotlight Hours for the rest of the month. Uh, so on Tuesday, August 4, we'll have Horsey in the Spotlight Hour and earn twice the candy for catching the Pokemon. So more candy for something we had for four years ago. <laughs> uh, but, you know, guys, Shiny, rank one Shinies. Chief, I'm sure you'll find one eventually. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try. I'll try my best. <laughs> I'll share the screenshot with you guys. If you. I will say a pro tip. <laughs> pro tip for for horsey spotlight hour. If you want to just run your gotcha and just kind of catch everything that's around, but maybe if you're low on Rayquaza candy or Gibble or Salamence candy, even you can do those raids, and the double candy still applies to the raid bosses. So while you're actually catching things, you can do the raids at the same time to kind of buff your candy reserves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, that's still, yeah, that's still doing it through the Dragon Week. So luckily we we will have, you know, double candy when it comes down to it. So make sure you do your raids, uh, even though Horsey is not the one that you want. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then we have Tuesday, August 11th, Sableye will be in the spotlight hour. And you'll earn twice as candy as transferring the Pokemon. So, Sableye, hey, hey, uh, who wants the, the Hondo shiny somewhere? <laughs> so many PvP Pokemon, man. I know, right? They're preparing it for something. I, I really felt like day two of GoFest was kind of a nod to PvP being the future. Yeah. Because just think, guys, if you never PvP before and every single stop you spun on Sunday was a rocket and you didn't want to battle, just imagine. It probably wasn't any fun. So I, I do think all these PvP Pokemon that we're getting in these spotlight hours, I think it is kind of preparing us for something. What that is, I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, the one difference that I see from day two of GoFest is that all the rocket stuffs were, like, insanely easy. You can literally mock yes. the Pokemon with just, like, one Pokemon it. and you would, it would be fine. Um, so yeah. whoever was... We call that getting, gateway PvP. I know, right? It's like, hey, you know, here's all the... Uh, <laughs> Easy rocket stops. I'm sure you, you will get to you know go battle league yeah. and then just get destroyed with your. I thought I was really good. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right. So the next week after that is will be August 18. Benny Pete will be in the spider hour, and you earn twice the experience for evolving the Pokemon. As we have mentioned, level 50 is on its way. So if you want to get to that final itch before level 50 is finally announced. Uh, and then take a screenshot before the, your legacy experience goes away. Uh, make sure you do that because, you know, you want to get to that point. And I'm sure that whoever is uh, racing for number one, even though you can't, bring, and you can't beat Brendan Tan on this, <laughs> um, I'm sure that you want to get as much experience as possible before level 50 is fully announced for us, you know, so... We'll see how that one goes. And of course, Benepi being, you know, Chris's favorite Pokemon. <laughs> Is it really? No. Oh, I shined it at that thing for so long. <laughs> it took me forever. Uh, he shined it in his Sword and Shield in his streams, and it took him like, I don't know, like 24,000 or 2,400 encounters. That's about right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, it, I mean, that, that's RNG for you, you know. You either get the shiny so quickly or you don't get it at all. That's usually how it works. <laughs> So, and then the final Tuesday, August uh, 25th of 2020, will be Geodude will be in the spotlight hour, and you'll earn twice the Stardust for catching the Pokemon. I mean, Stardust is always something that we want, uh, Geodude being a wonderful shiny Pokemon, but I'm sure that he has his niches in different ways. I hope that both Geodude and Alola and Geodude will be spawning, but that's just like, you know, uh, a farewell gift or, or wish when it comes down to it. So. <laughs> It'd be interesting. Yeah. So, and then lastly, of course, we just want to make sure uh, Dragon Week is still going on. It will be going on until August 7th. So make sure you do that. And then Enigma Week will be beginning on Friday, August 7th. So as just as Dragon Week ends, the next one, next, one, next one will come around. And of course, we'll have the wonderful Pokemon of the Axis coming back. Not Defend the Axis. And this has been confirmed. Uh, normal type the Axis will be available. And of course, the Shiny will be released. So, uh, it's cool. I'm sure that a lot cool. of people will come down to it. I hope that one day you know you'll be able to change it when it comes down to it. But you know that's Niantic for you. So it's the Margie meme. I just think it's neat. <laughs> oh my gosh! You think that it is one of the best colors? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Um, but you know, once the shiny is released, usually the other forms will come around. Uh, do remember that that week also we do have unknown in raids. So if they do release the other letter shiny, good luck. <laughs> Oh my goodness. As soon as I told Pure Letter that, he's like, oh no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you actually if you actually go to your Pokedex right now in the game and you do go through Unknown, uh, this is actually something that um, Reversal noted because usually when you get the shiny, you get all the shiny forms in the decks. So you're like, okay, maybe this is what happened. Now, if is you actually go <laughs> to your Unknowns in your Pokedex, you see a separate line that says shiny form and you only see the one shiny or whatever shiny you got already of the unknown so every other one you have to catch dude that's the first thing i thought during go fest too i was like well i only need to get the one <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> oh, did you no. did you get any shiny unknowns in uh, go fest there speedy i did not I, I just got them for the stardust and just just to catch them but i did not my my prize unknown is a lucky hondo question mark Dude. Nice. That is nice. It's nice, between nice. the question mark and the exclamation for my favorite. My, for sure. my yep. favorite unknown is the unknown S that I found uh, just randomly in the wild when they first got they, they for, were first released. And I was hunting with my friends. And then all of a sudden, my back, my, uh, one of my friends in the back of the car, they say, oh, an unknown. And we were like, what? It's like coming out like that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's crazy. That's oh, awesome. That's kind of hard to see. Yeah, no, but yeah. it's still pretty good. I was going to say, like, yeah, for those of you oh, who yeah. Know, yeah, that is weird. Yeah, and you guys can see it in the stream also, too. I'm actually showing the uh, the un shiny unknown and, of course, how the dex is. So, it you is know, where weird. that's it. Uh, but, you know, interestingly enough, that lucky unknown, or not that lucky unknown, the unknown that I actually got in the wild was a 98 IV. And I was like, how it's like i mean that was the only i know i ever caught in the wild aside from you know the event so i'm never gonna delete that and it was 98 so i'm like I i'll take it i was gonna say it, it would be nice if it was the hondo though trust me i would actually go bananas if that would have been the case but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah so enigma week make sure you guys do that it's gonna go all the way to august 14 and then uh on after that we'll have the you know week which you know amoga will be the one Pokemon that we're probably going to see in the Flying Cup. <laughs> uh, but then, of course, other Pokemon. We'll definitely be talking about and reviewing those things as the weeks come along, guys. So don't forget to tune in for the next few weeks. So, yeah. So that's all really all the news we got. You know, coming out of GoFest, we wanted to make... Uh, hopefully, they wanted to make sure, that, you know, the month of August is already packed jam with new news and updates. But we hope we get a little bit more in the next few days because... I don't know. I, I like having events. I just don't like ob being overwhelmed with them for a long time. So maybe they're taking these three weeks to really prepare for the next few months because, I mean, we still have way more news and, you know, Generation 6 and Megas are going to be a big, big thing once it comes down. So we'll see how that really works. And, you know, so uh, a little bit of miscellaneous news to cover up just a few things. Uh, GBL, or the least Niantic support, they said... GBL is not going to require when they go to downtime for players to wait for the downtime. So um, when they, they say, oh, we're going to go and do uh, a maintenance update to GBL, it will not go down for maintenance for anybody. So do you guys think this is a good thing, a bad thing? What are your thoughts? I got to wait till I see what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious if I'm going to be like mid-match and it's just going to be like, yeah, your opponents just wiped you. I'm sorry. You're gone. <laughs> That's already a glitch anyways. <laughs> Chief, what about you? Yeah, I feel like it's just another testament to how much of a, a pillar that GBL has become. So uh, prior to this, Niantic would have to take it down for server maintenance just because they couldn't work on the actual code and have it running at the same time. But it shows that they've, they've, taken, they've made it a priority and taken steps to allow people to play it uh, constantly 24 hours a day so it just it just kind of shows you that they're taking it seriously and they want people to have access to it and it's too important for them to bring down every every few days for maintenance so yeah. it shows me that they care and they're working on the problems and hopefully uh, desync and all these other issues will get sorted out soon but it's a very troubling thing uh, you guys saw the actual Jesus exploit oh he had a rooted phone 
Yeah, he had a second phone that was rooted, and he had it all the way down. It just I, I don't I don't understand the technical aspects of it, but uh, that is something really hard for a platform to control. So Niantic is working on the problem. We have seen them tweet about it before, and I feel like this is just another step towards making a very smooth and clean GBL experience for everybody. Oh yeah, definitely, and I agree. You probably said that you know 100. You know what everybody thinks about how GBL is really going through. I'm sure there will be you know there are people that are gonna be say, why is the lag happening? This is like this. Niantic, you suck. I'm like you know so <laughs> <laughs> little crybabies that really want to go through this, but I mean, I mean, I understand their concerns. You know, they want to do good. They want to get to rank 10. Want to get um, rank 10? Yeah. yeah they want to get. Whatever special Pokemon, I really do gotta do my batches so that way I can get you know to the Dino because I really want a shiny too. So <laughs> um, rank seven, boy. Yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, so I mean, good good on them. They don't require downtime to for any maintenance, but I don't know. We'll see how when it happens. Uh, the next maintenance, I'm sure they will be coming out pretty soon to share the news and updates, of course, of the flying cup and everything. So. And then finally, uh, the special bonuses, of course, have been extended. So uh, if you once again go to your Today tab, uh, you'll see that the special bonuses that we have has been all extended through the month of August. I know that the world is still going through a lot for sure. So it's nice that you know you don't have to worry, especially now that rate invites are a thing. And I'm sure that people want to keep doing the extra damage that you want, especially for Requasa, especially for the Axis, and especially for the Announce. So... <laughs> um, Definitely a lot, a lot going there. Um, we didn't mention it, but I did say that in the last week of the Ultra League or the Ultra Unlock, we have Genesec, of course, Genesec. You know, being a shiny, being released in that week, man, I'm gonna go through a lot of money. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be cool. Oh my god! As much as I love Ray, I do gotta get a shiny Genesec too. Yeah, yeah. That, that I think it's red. Too. Yeah, it, it, it is fully red. If you actually uh, watch the movie, you see that Genesis, uh, uh, shiny Genesis is like part of the uh, the movie. So, so cool. Um, but yeah, that's actually so everything that we have for you guys today. Uh, I want to thank Chief Speedy's Chief for actually joining us once again uh, as you know one of our very first and you know continuing guests here on the Purify Podcast. Um, you know, every time you bring in, you bring something amazing, and of course, you know. Uh, from zero to hero, just like this podcast is about today. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You put on a great show, man, and, and you cover everything so well, so succinctly. I think the back and forth is great. Uh, Chris, Luis, it's always a pleasure coming on the show. And I'll come on anytime you want me to. Anytime I can lend a hand, uh, offer something that is informative and people actually want to see, I'm all about it. But if I'm too boring and if I talk for too long, just like. Anyway, we will, we'll do our, uh, you know, our collaborations on our channels. If you actually need some help on Twitch, just let us know. We are getting getting a little bit of what, you know, the feel is about. So if you need the help, call us. You know, we, we will happily help you on any settings or anything that you need. And, if, you know, if we can, you know, Chris and you can actually go through some matches around the world. So <laughs> Yeah. Huge awesome. fan. would love to throw hands in the future. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll, we'll get it. our friend Cos ready, and then let's get the, that best friend going, and the lucky trades and everything. So we'll see for sure. But cool. um, before we end the podcast, and we we'll do our own plugins, of course, uh, Chief, you can go ahead and you know any socials that you want people to follow you at. Uh, we know you have your YouTube or anything. Anywhere that you did, our community can find us. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just two places for right now. The first is Speediest Chief 2 on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see cooking videos, leave out the eyes because you don't get speedy as chef, and that, that'll be a fun time. Uh, but if you want PvP, then then leave the eyes in. If you want to find me on Twitter, uh, Twitter scramble my name. It's Chief 2 Speediest. So you can follow me there. I try to post informative things like maps, uh, or excuse me, not maps, but calendars of upcoming events and that so that you can keep track of everything that's going on in the pvp world that niantic is built for us yeah definitely definitely so make guys make sure that if you're listening that uh you go follow him again you know the champion of the north americans i'm pretty sure you want to see what he has in store for you guys <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, again, once again, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you want to keep on, you know, on the show and you want to keep track, and if you want to listen to your drive at work, you, we're also on podcast, um, podcast services: Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Arha Raider, Stitcher, and more. So if you want to keep on uh, the grind and you can, you know, sit down and watch YouTube all the time, even though this is a live podcast, 
you can check us out there and we'll definitely have the episode out for you guys in the next few days uh, you can also email us at the Purified Podcast uh, at gmail.com. You can also text and voice message at 941-417-9243. So that way, you know, if you have questions or concerns or anything, just let us know. If you want to tell us about your day or how things went, we want to know from you guys. So, uh, and of course, of course, don't forget to check us out at the purifiedpodcast.com, the professional network, just everything that they do and wonderfully. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Chris, thank you once again for joining us for this wonderful podcast. Always a pleasure and definitely very, very fun today. <laughs> definitely. And Chief, thank you very much for sticking with us for the last hour and a half. If you need some water, go ahead and get them right now because I'm pretty sure we're going to need them. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Thank you, gentlemen. Always a pleasure. Great show. All right, Chris, you want to take us away? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, if you guys want to, you know, Check us out next week. Come on by. We're going to be having a fun time every week for sure. And, uh, you know, it's been a real good pleasure. I'm a huge fan of Speed is Chief, so it's always a pleasure to see him drop by, especially after winning such a big tournament. <laughs> and uh, hope you guys all have a good week. Get your shinies, post them, show us them. It'll be awesome. Okay? Peace out. Have a good night, guys. <laughs>